This is lecture three, correlation. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to understand the intuition behind a Pearson's correlation coefficient, calculate a Pearson's correlation coefficient, interpret a Pearson's correlation coefficient, and understand the limitations of using a Pearson's correlation coefficient. Consider the following hypothesis. As the GDP per capita of a country increases, net migration in that country increases. In order to provide support for this hypothesis, I collected data on the GDP per capita and net migration of several countries. This graph displays a scatter plot of this data. In a scatter plot, you place the dependent variable on the y-axis, the independent variable on the x-axis, and you place each data point for each observation on the graph. Just by looking at this graph, you can see that as GDP per capita increases, net migration increases. Nevertheless, even though the graph gives us visual confirmation that as GDP per capita increases, net migration increases, we would like to know how strong the relationship between GDP per capita and net migration is. One way to measure the specific strength of the relationship between two variables is a correlation coefficient. A correlation coefficient tells us the direction of the relationship between two variables. It tells us if as one variable increases, the other variable increases, decreases, or stays the same. A correlation coefficient ranges from negative one to one Correlation coefficients close to negative 1 indicate a strong negative relationship between two variables. In other words, as one variable increases, the other variable tends to almost always decrease. Correlation coefficients close to 1 indicate a strong positive relationship between two variables. In other words, as one variable increases, the other variable tends to almost always increase as well. Correlation coefficients close to zero indicate as one variable increases, the other variable does not change. This is how you calculate a correlation coefficient. The numerator is the sum of the product of each individual x observation minus the mean of x and that value divided by the standard deviation of x and each y observation minus the mean of y, and that value divided by the standard deviation of y. The denominator is the number of observations minus 1. What the correlation coefficient measures is whether each individual x observation deviates from its mean in a similar pattern to its corresponding y deviating from its mean. I created a series of graphs to demonstrate what this means sub substantively. Imagine you have a graph with four quadrants. In quadrant A, all observations are below the mean of x and above the mean of y. In quadrant B, all observations are above the mean of x and y. In quadrant C, all observations are below the mean of x and y. In quadrant D, all observations are above the mean of x and below the mean of y. When there is a positive relationship between x and y, when an observation is below the mean of x, it is also below the mean of y. In addition, when an observation is above the mean of x, it is above the mean of y. All observations vary from the mean of x and y in a similar pattern. When there is a negative relationship between x and y, when an observation is below the mean of x, it is above the mean of y. In addition, when an observation is above the mean of x, it is below the mean of y. All observations vary from the mean of x and y in a different pattern. When there is no relationship between x and y, there is no pattern to how observations vary from their means. Observations are located within each quadrant. 
as a numerical example, consider the, consider the following two variables, variable x and variable y. The mean of variable x is 50 and the mean of variable y is 10. In observation 1, x is 70 above the mean of x and y is 20 above the mean of y. For observation 2, x is 30 below the mean of x and y is 5 below the mean of y. This implies that there is a positive relationship between x and y. When an observation is above the mean of x, it is above the mean of y. When an observation is below the mean of x, it is also below the mean of y. Next, consider the, the next two variables, variable x and variable y. The mean of variable x is 50 and the mean of variable y is 10. In observation 1, x is 70 above the mean of x and y is 5 below the mean of y. For observation 2, x is 30 below the mean of x and y is 20 above the mean of y. This implies that there is a negative relationship between x and y. When an observation is above the mean of x, it is below the mean of y. When an observation is below the mean of x, it is above the mean of y. Next, consider the next two variables, variable x and variable y. The mean of variable x is 50 and the mean of variable y is 10. In observation 1, x is 70 above the mean of x and y is 20 above the mean of y. For observation 2, x is 30 below the mean of x and y is 20 above the mean of y. This implies that there is no relationship between x and y. There is no consistent pattern in how each individual observation deviates from the means of x and y. The correlation coefficient also takes into account the extent to which individual observations deviate from the mean versus how often observations deviate from the mean overall. You can calculate a large deviation from a mean for an individual observation, but if most observations deviate strongly from the mean of that variable, then the large deviation for that individual observation is not as significant. Now I am going to show you how to calculate a correlation coefficient. I will use data from the beginning of the lecture that measures GDP per capita and net migration of individual countries. Note that I am only going to show you four observations in the slides, but I used a total of 178 observations in this analysis. What we need to do is calculate the mean of x and the mean of y. Just as a reminder, as with the rest of the calculations, I did this for all 178 observations. Next, you calculate the standard deviations of x and y. Next, you subtract the mean of x from each x. 340.93 minus 9902.18 equals negative 9561.25. You do this for the rest of the observations. Then you divide the values from step 3 by the standard deviation of x. Negative 9561.25 divided by 14484.48 equals negative 0 0.66. You do this for the rest of the observations. Then you subtract the mean of y from each y. Negative 381030 minus 5832.34 equals negative 386862. And you do this for the rest of the observations. Then you divide the values from step 5 by the standard deviation of y. Negative 386. 862 
divided by 706365.1 equals negative 0 0.55. You do this for the rest of the observations. Then you multiply the values from step 4 and 6 together. Negative 0 0.66 times negative 0 0.55 equals 0 0.36. And you do this for the rest of the observations. Then you add all the values from step 7 together. When I did that, I got 69.12. Remember that I used 178 observations, and I'm only showing you four here, so this sum should not be the same as the sum of these four observations. Then you divide the value from step 8 by the number of observations minus 1, or 178 minus 1, which is 177. 69.12 divided by 177 equals 0 0.39. This gives you your correlation coefficient of 0 0.39. Remember that the correlation coefficient ranges from negative 1 to 1, and it tells us if there is a positive, negative, or neutral relationship between two variables. Unfortunately, there is no consistent way to interpret the results of a correlation analysis. The interpretation can sometimes be subjective. Here is a general way to interpret the results of a correlation analysis that I want you to use in this class. If the correlation coefficient is between negative 1 and negative 0 0.75, then you should say there is a strong negative relationship between two variables. This means that as one variable increases, the other variable almost always decreases. If the correlation coefficient is between negative 0 0.74 and negative 0 0.21, then you should say there is a negative relationship between two variables. This means that as one variable increases, the other variable often decreases. If the correlation coefficient is between negative 0.20 and negative 0.10, then you should say there is a weak negative relationship between two variables. This means that as one variable increases, the other variable sometimes decreases. If the correlation coefficient is between negative 0.09 and 0.09, then you should say there is a neutral relationship between two variables. This means that as one variable increases, the other variable sometimes increases and sometimes decreases with no recognizable pattern. If the correlation coefficient is between 0.10 and 0.20, then you should say there is a weak positive relationship between two variables. This means that as one variable increases, the other variable sometimes increases. If the correlation coefficient is between 0.21 and 0.74, then you should say there is a positive relationship between two variables. This means that as one variable increases, the other variable often increases. If the correlation coefficient is between 0.75 and 1, then you should say there is a strong positive relationship between two variables. This means that as one variable increases, the other variable almost always increases. Using these criteria to interpret our correlation coefficient, our correlation coefficient was 0.39. That would suggest that there is a positive relationship between G the GDP per capita and net migration of a country. As GDP per capita increases, net migration often increases. Generally speaking, when an individual observation's GDP per capita is above its mean, net migration is also above the mean. And when GDP per capita is below the mean, net migration is also below the mean. However, the fact that it is only a positive relationship 
and not strongly positive means that some observations do not follow this pattern, like these observations in quadrant F. To finish the lecture, I would like to discuss two problems with correlation coefficients. First, all of these relationships between an X and a Y have different patterns, but they all have the same correlation coefficients. So a correlation coefficient can give you a general idea of the relationship between two variables, but it cannot tell you exactly what that relationship looks like. Second, Correlation coefficients cannot tell you the specific relationship between an x and a y. They cannot tell you, as x changes by 1, how much does y change. That is what a regression analysis tells you, which is the subject of the final lecture in this course. And here I'll just leave you with some statistics humor.